Let me touch on hydrogen a little bit later, but I got kind of a segue to get us there. Um, so in this treasure trove of information that was on the Obspec Dave interview, um, I learned a lot about your past. You're um, kind of a, a BMW guy in some ways, having started out with uh, the, the Mini and then ultimately, um, you know, made your way to the i3, right? So... The i3 is an interesting thing for me, all right? And I'm going to look to you for some guidance and poke some fun at it at the, at the beginning and then get serious with. The i3, I came here um, as a, uh, a, a lease person, and we were renting space here at Monroe from my former company. And I would walk by this BMW i3 that they had torn down, this carbon fiber and aluminum fantastic piece of engineering. And... At first, I was kind of repulsed by the way it looks, and then it kind of grew on me, you know, and every time I walked by it, I got more and more attracted to it. Monroe was selling the data for the car at that time for a half a million dollars. Um, I, you know, got my company to buy some of that data, and it was very helpful information about how it worked. Um, and then over time, you know, that data became less and less interesting. And I don't know, it was about a year ago, we put it on our website for $10, the data. I have a copy and of it. I bought it too. <laughs> it was at that point then I said, you know, this car is part of my future, whether I like it or not. And I do like it now. So I started the strategy of, you know, cherry picking some of the, the best photos I could find. You know, certainly the i3S is a lot better looking vehicle. So I take my wife aside and say, hey, what do you think of me getting one of these? She goes, oh, what's that? Oh, that's a BMW i3, and it's a technical marvel. Oh, she goes, oh, okay, well, you can buy one of those, but don't expect me to be a passenger in it. And I, oh, what, do you, what do you do about that? You know, have you got any advice for how to, you know, convince our wives? It's one of the best values you have out there right now as a used EV, especially with the federal tax incentive that's out there now. Uh, you can't get a better bang for your buck if your, your range requirements aren't high. Tell us how to sell our spouses on this. <laughs> well, I didn't have to sell my spouse. My wife loved, I had two i3s, absolutely loved them, still misses them, still talks about how great it was to drive how easy it was to park, how she loved driving it in New York City. She works in New York City. So it's a fantastic car for scooting around the city, dodging in and out of traffic, you know, parking it, fitting it in tight parking spaces. Um, my wife, I didn't have to sell her. She absolutely, it's one of her favorite cars. Um, to this day, she's like, God, I wish we had the i3 again. And um, my good friend just yesterday bought a 2020 i3S. Caparis white, so it's the white and black, the Stormtrooper, mm, nice. uh, uh, the fully loaded with the range extender, the Rex. Got it for 27000 mm. A 2020 with 2,800 miles. Oh, my God. And he the got $4,000 from the federal it government. Excluded it, but no, no, I don't think so because I think that you Oh, it's right. It's 25000 25000 You're right. So he didn't, he didn't get that, but he was happy. He's like, this was a steal. So he drove to like Connecticut or something to get it. And um, he is so happy with it. And it's absolutely mint condition. You could pick up a used 2020 i3S with the range extender for like 27, 28,000, buy it and then convince your wife. <laughs> or, or get one with a few more miles. A little bit. With a few yeah. more miles on it, you can get it under yeah, 25K and get, under. and get another 4,000 off if you buy yeah. it from a qualified dealer. Yeah. So let, let your, as far as convincing them, let her drive it for a little while. And you know, you, you tell her, look, maybe the outside isn't like, you know, it, it, the, the the most the pleasant lines that you can have, but it, it grew on me. I like it. Um, and to be honest with you, you see those things driving down the road now, it still looks futuristic. It does. It's 10 years old. That launched 10 years ago this month hmm. in Europe. And uh, it's a 10 year old car. It looks more modern than 99% of the cars. Maybe than anything but a Cybertruck, <laughs> right? What what else looks more modern than an i3 going down the road, you know, like, or more futuristic? So, so I mean, there's more to the story that you have, I'm pretty sure, because you got T-boned at 45 miles an hour driving yours, and you're here to talk about it. So what was that like? You know, um, 
were you fearing that the car would light on fire? Was there carbon fiber all over the place? What was your experience after that accident? Yeah, no, um, I wasn't fearing a fire. I actually, so I was at a stopped at a, at a red light. My light turned green. So I started going through the intersection. And as I got right through the middle of the intersection, this was a very busy road. Person coming uh, across me didn't realize their light had turned green. They actually said they were looking at the radio. So they were going 45 miles an hour, which just just T-boned me, 45 miles an hour, right in the passenger side of the vehicle. And the interesting thing is the car like flexed in and like bounced back. Like, you know, it, it, I, I like saw the car, like the door like come in and then it like bounced back to shape. So it was it was really weird that like, um, I guess it's plastic door panels and, you know, I mean, there was damage inside the door panels and everything. But when I got out and walked around the car, it didn't like you knew it was in an accident, but it didn't look like crushed in. Like the, the all the panels were back out to where they were supposed to be. Yes, the there was the frame cracked, so that totaled it. Um, the the carbon fiber frame where the battery pack is broke. But um, I wasn't afraid. Um, I didn't I didn't even give it a second thought about it going on fire. To be honest with you, it's just you know that jarring when you get hit at forty five miles an hour. And I was going like maybe ten miles an hour. I was just starting to go through the intersection. You know, it kind of shocks you for a second, and then you just get there and like okay. I was just hit and uh, I seem to be okay. You know, um, that, that was tough, but I, I have another, if we have time, another interesting quick segue into talking about wondering if the car went on fire. Wasn't my first accident in an electric car back in 2012. Um, do you, do you know what the act BMW active E was? I do. It, they didn't bring okay. it out, but it was a teaser. It was a pilot program mm -hmm. and I was in it. Um, and it was a uh, BMW converted a one series BMW to a, a fully electric and they called it the active E. It was, it was the test bed for the I3. The powertrain would eventually go in the I3. So I had that and I was beta testing it from 2012 to 2014. So I had a bad accident in that car. And this time I was on the highway and there was a car in the fast and I'm in the middle lane and the car didn't see me. I guess I was in his blind spot. And he quick cut over. And before I could react, it was late at night. It was like midnight. He clipped the front of my car and I started sliding sideways. And there was a dump truck in the slow lane, fully loaded dump truck, 50,000 pounds. And it, we were going up a hill. So he was going like 15 miles an hour. And I was going 65, 70 miles an hour. And I slid sideways into the back of a dump truck at 70 miles an hour. And he was going 15 miles an hour. Total, total the car. I had to have two back surgeries because of that. But so now I'm in the ambulance and they're driving me to the hospital. And this was before electric cars really came out. You know, it was 2012. The, I don't even know if the, I guess the leaf had launched and the, and the Volt. And um, I hear over the radio, um, like the, the driver's getting real. Um, the car's on, the car's on fire. The car just went on fire. Get, get um, uh, fire over here. So I'm assuming they're talking about my car and I'm saying, oh, my God, like they don't know this is an electric car because there were no electric cars out there. And it's a BMW. So I, I told the medic, I was like, let please. And I could barely talk because I was banged up bad. And I, I said, uh, please tell the radio to the police. It's an electric car. Don't tell the firefighters not to approach it because if it's on fire, it might be whatever. Just let it burn you know, on the side of the road. So um they radio back and I hear them going back and forth and uh, they come back and they're like, that's not your car on fire. They said, that, that, that's another, that's another accident, like down in Newark or something, you know what I mean? But like, and I'm thinking to myself, the firefighter is going to get shocked and killed. And like, this is going to like kill the electric vehicle movement. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> and, well, uh, and, work, and I'll be responsible. All and your I'd work be responsible. tossed to the wind. Yes. I, I would be the one that killed the electric car, you know? <laughs> so, uh, but that was funny, but it wasn't. And uh, you know, 